Welcome in to Buckeyes Now here on Sports Illustrated. As usual, I'm Adam Prescott, hanging out today with class of 2021 Ohio State football commit down there in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, safety Andre Turrentine. Andre, uh, we know you got a lot going on, so we really appreciate you taking a little bit of time with us. Uh, no, you've been nursing a little bit of an injury. I uh, had to miss a few games. Excited to get back out there uh, this coming week. Uh, just update us in terms of, uh, you know, finally getting back on the field and excited to get another couple opportunities to play. Well, it's, it's annoying playing with – playing through something like this. Uh, it all comes down to, like, want to. Um, it's, it feels good to be back out there. I don't have many opportunities left uh, at this level, so I'm trying to make the most of it. Um, I've been knowing what it takes to get back out there, so it feels good to finally be back out there. Yeah, I know a lot of kids uh, jealous of you don't even have the opportunity to be out there right now. So, uh, Endsworth, a little bit of a tough season. I know you guys have a 2-5 and five record right now, but, you know, you lost, I think, a two-point game, a nine-point game to Brentwood, who's undefeated, and then a 10-point game. You've been in a lot of those. 2020 uh, has been a tough year in general. Uh, what kind of, uh, you know, things have you learned about yourself, and then maybe how has it helped you through this kind of adverse time on the football field? Uh, well, I think 2020 has just learned, it's just taught me, and I think it's taught a lot of people just how to respond um, in situations where you have no control. Um, things that you thought would go a certain way, things that you thought would go the right way that can change in a matter of 24 hours. Mm -hmm. They you're able to play, and then come the next day, you got to wait two more weeks to play. So it's it's annoying, uh, all the stuff we had to deal with, but it just taught me how to be patient and also how to respond to things I had no control over and just control the things that I could control. Yeah. Yeah, tough times call for inspiration. We all draw it from a lot of different places. Uh, where do you go for inspiration? Who's inspired you the most over the years? Uh, my parents, actually. Um, I think my mom has inspired me from a young age, just battling with things that, like I said, I have no control over. And when you feel like you're down and there's no like other place that you can go just to to keep moving. Basically, my dad uh, teaches me a lot, just a different way of thinking things, different way of viewing things. He's been through this world more than me. And he's been this world on before me. So just teaching me things that I wouldn't think of and how people would move and things that I wouldn't see in people. And then I can see it better with, with their eyes. So I look to my parents a lot for inspiration. And when I need to an answer for something, I may not tell them that I'm looking for an answer, but they always know what to say. Mm -hmm. I'm the same way, man. I got, my mom is uh, one of the strongest people I've ever met. Uh, par strong parents, incredible. Yeah. Um, I know uh, you've excelled in more than just football. You've also uh, competed at a high level in basketball, uh, track and field. Uh, what did your youth upbringing look like? Uh, when did all those sports be, was football the, the one that you liked the most, or was it just one that you were the best at? Uh, how did, how did all your sports journey come full circle, you know, with more than just, you know, football? So football was the first sport I ever played. I didn't really play any other sports when I was younger. I tried basketball when I was, uh, maybe like 10. I don't even think I was in, nah, probably before 10. I'm like six or seven. I was in first grade, um, and I tried basketball. I didn't like it very much. I had a, a bad team, and people was, like, on the team. It was seven-year-olds, so they was, like, somebody would dribble, and somebody would just come up and take the ball from them. So, like, just stuff like that, I didn't really like it. So I took a break from basketball. I didn't really try track. I tried track some, like, AAU track thing, but, like, me thinking I'm, like, football, 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 yeah. and these kids are coming out here with headbands and sleeves on, like – trying to be track runner, so I didn't really I didn't really like that. I took a break from, from track and basketball for a while. I had a basketball goal at my house and I would just play by myself and play with my, my family and my friends. But I, I took a break from those for a while. I didn't pick up track and uh basketball until seventh grade. And uh I like basketball. I liked it when I played it, but I realized that like basketball is for like you gotta be playing since you were a kid. And that's tough to put about, down and pick back up, yeah. yeah. But how I am about sports, like, I can put – I can – six months I can get to where a kid has been working for three years again. So, I was uh, – when seventh grade I came in and just knowing that there's a lot of stuff that these kids can do that I, I can't do just because I haven't played it. I worked all seventh grade summer, all eighth grade summer to get to get to the same level or even better than the kids that are in, that were my age that have been playing their whole life. So, I mean, I liked it, but – it's not football, and it will never be football. So yeah. I didn't really felt the need to keep continuing when I could focus on playing football. 
Yeah, so I'm sure, you know, get, staying in shape on the track helps you when you get back on the gridiron. Uh, speaking of, of football, uh, you know, you're six foot, probably roughly, what, 185? Uh, yeah. when, you get to, when you get to college, you're not going to be, you know, maybe the fast. You're fast, but you might not be the fastest. And you can hit and tackle, but you may not hit the hardest. Uh, but you're a top 10 safety in the country for a reason. Uh, how do you feel you approach the game and maybe offset some of those other, you know, maybe stats or superlatives and height and weight? So I think – what separates um, a great player from a good player, obviously when you're in high school, that when a crazy athlete's on the field, 6'5", 240, or a kid that can run a 4'3", a like they're going to obviously surpass everybody on the field because they, they're just – they're too dominant for someone to control them, no matter how hard the other kid tried. Yeah. But when you're in a, a game where – the, it's equal playing grounds, what separates the, someone and also what might get somebody on the field is like what they know and where they're supposed to be and being where they're supposed to be and being in the right spot to make a play. So um, I think what separates me is that I'm a student of the game and I take every little uh, detail and every advantage that I can take to to maybe win some of those matchups. Um, I stay in the film room, I stay in the study room and I study what uh, teams like to do, what quarterbacks like to do, how they – how they approach the game and then also how the receivers approach the game. So I like to look at offenses and just what everything, what people do in entirety and just how I can implement my game and focus on the smaller details to help me win those matchups and will help me win those games. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I, I love about you so much is that in a time where so many 16, 17, 18 year olds are constantly on social media, uh, that's not really your kind of thing. I think I counted, I think you've tweeted four times since the beginning of August. And one of those was about a great Special Olympics uh, guy that, that uh, had inspired you. Uh, where does that come from? Because it feels like so often these days that, you know, your workout doesn't count unless you put it on social media or, you know, this outfit, you didn't wear it unless you take a picture to, you know, throw it on Instagram. It's like, you know, so many people are concentrated on building their personal brands. I feel like you've taken a different approach. Talk to me about, about that. I think it's pretty admirable the way you've gone about it. Well, I kind of look at it and see the fact that as a 16 and 17 year old, yeah, building a personal brand matters. But at this age, I feel like it doesn't do anything but build popularity and pressure. Um, my play and what happens at the next level, the brand is going to build itself. There's nothing mm -hmm. that you need to do. There's people that you can go to. There's uh, people that are exp experts in this stuff and that, that will know what to do to help you build your brand. But as far as going on posting everything, like trolling teams, trolling schools, like saying they're going there, saying they're going there when they're really going to another place just to get school's attention, get more people's attention, to have more followers, to have more people looking at them. I can I, I can understand where that would be fun, but like I don't really see the point in it. Yeah. I mean, at this age, I guess. Um you're just more people to to what's it called, to doubt you to say things like, yeah, there'd be more people to inspire you maybe say something to you and how you inspire them and you reach more people when you are that way but I think all that stuff is going to come on its own and right now focusing on that is not going to help me get to where I need to go yeah I love it I couldn't agree more uh speaking of social media your twitter handle I think it's king at or whatnot so I know king is just oftentimes how you feel so I'm going to throw a couple kings out you can only pick one so we got king kong we got Burger King and we got Lion King. So you got to tell me uh, what your favorite is there. You can only pick one of those and why. Okay, one of those and why. King Kong, Burger King, or Lion King? Sometimes I feel like King Kong. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like Lion King. Yeah. Burger King, eh, that's not it. Burger King is something. So that doesn't help well, you anyway, option. right? That's no other option. Um, so I think – I'm going to explain both of those. I think I'm end up going with Lion King, but I'm explaining why, like, King Kong just have a savage mentality. Uh, you know, he on top of the building, on top of the city. Uh, he's savage mentality, not caring what anybody says, not caring how many people want to take him down. He's still up there doing his thing. So I feel like sometimes you have to be in a, a King Kong mentality, but also have that Lion King mentality where you can lead the people around you people who aren't to the place you need to be, people who want to be where you are and know how to lead them and lead yourself to be a better person. So I think Lion King is most probably be me more, but sometimes you got to have that, that King Kong in you. 
right. I said pick one, but you gave great answers for both, so we'll let it well, settle. Lion King, my answer. Lion King, my answer. <laughs> yeah, we'll let it settle with that. Uh, <laughs> yes, you live in Murfreesboro, but you attend school at Endsworth, uh, which is in Nashville, uh, uh, 45 minutes to an hour away. It's a heck of a commute. Uh, I was actually in Nashville a couple uh, years ago uh, for my mom's birthday celebration. I had some incredible barbecue, and I can't remember the place we were at. But if I make it back down there again, where would you point me for barbecue? Where's like where's Andre's go-to barbecue spot? Uh, I can't think of it. Remember, there's a, there's a place by my school. I think it's called Honey Fire. I think that's what it's called. Honey Fire. Honey right? Fire. I think that's what it's called. But uh, you could even say somewhere in Murfreesboro like, if you wanted. Huh? I said you could even say somewhere in Murfreesboro. I don't even be in Murfreesboro like that. <laughs> but, uh, I think it's Honey Fire. Yeah, it's called Honey Fire Barbecue. It's really good. I went there with my defensive coordinator. We had a talk and had a uh, lunch probably in mid-June. We had lunch there. So uh, it's, it's a really good place. I think it's like New York-style barbecue. It's really good. I think you should try it. I'll have to jot that down. Uh, you know, you're one of, you know, 20 commits here in this, in this uh, upcoming recruiting cycle. Uh, as you get to know all these other guys, obviously it's been frustrating right now with the pandemic. You haven't really been able to meet a ton of guys in person or hang out or whatnot, um, you know, that many times at least. As you guys get to learn all about each other, you're all from different parts of the country and you're soon going to be together. What are you most excited about that's evolving within this group of guys? Just our mentality. We all have our own separate, like, way of going about that mentality, but it's also always all the same going on, same mentality. I don't think there's any selfish guys in this – in this class coming in, I know there's a lot of schools where kids want to – obviously, everybody has the same gym playing on, playing on Sundays, playing in the league. So, I feel like in other schools and other environments that I've been in, that that mentality was, like, the forefront. Like, um, just the – just how everybody – like, the selfishness and people want to get theirs. And I understand that that's how you got to be coming in. But, like, I feel like to win a championship and to be where you want to be in the – be that team playing in late January like you want to be able to you have to be all together as a team and I feel like we all know the kind of players we are and what we bring to this school but we come in together as like a brotherhood and ready ready to play and battle for each other already even though we haven't had that contact that we usually would have if things were normal yeah yeah, like I said, we got we can't wait to see all you guys up here in Columbus very soon. I believe you were up here in Columbus last year for the Penn State game, correct? Uh, yes, I was. All right, so before we go, we let you go here. We're gonna get a score prediction for you from for, for this Saturday, and uh, if you can get uh, within a certain figure, we'll say if you can get within maybe ten points of what both teams end up combining to. Uh, we got an incredible graphics guy here at Buckeyes now uh, named Eddie Murata. We'll get you a free edit. Uh, if you can give me – so you got it. both teams score. So Ohio State, Penn State, final score, and uh, we'll see how close you can get. I'm saying 38-17. 38-17, that's not a bad guess, actually. I, I like those numbers. I like those numbers. It's different with no, with no whiteout, uh, a lot different going to Happy Valley than with 100,000 people screaming, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it would be 38-17. 38-17, Andre Turntine down here in Tennessee. Appreciate you taking some time out of your busy day to spend with us here at Buckeyes Now and Sports cool. Illustrated. Uh, best of luck moving forward uh, this fall, and I uh, can't wait to see you in Columbus, man. We'll catch up again soon. All right. Thank you.